Welcome to The Teapot Reads. I'm The Teapot. This is what I'm currently reading and I am so happy to see you today. I'm sitting on the floor um, in one of the rooms in the house because my dog recently received surgery so I'm chilling with him on the floor. You're probably going to see him walking around. He's having a bit of a better day today. Um, and if you see any weird cuts, it's because I have to go take care of him or help him with something. He's recovering well. He's just emotionally and mentally not quite there. And, and I've just given him some peanut butter. Um, so that's kind of got him up a bit. But today I thought it would be really cool to talk about some UK versus US covers for books that I actually own and have read and my thoughts on, <laughs> on my thoughts on them and whether I think the cover represents the book itself very well. So I chose a handful of titles that I really like and or I guess I shouldn't say I really like all of them but I really like most of them and I thought it would be really kind of fun to just talk about them. So first of all we have Uprooted by Naomi Novik. So we have the US paperback cover. It's not available in hardcover anymore. Um, and the UK hardcover edition. Technically, this is the Illumicrate edition. I think the foiling is what they added, but I'm not 100% sure. But just take it in. Okay, I'm back. Um, I do love my dog, and I feel so bad that he has got to go through this recovery process, but um, he's not make it easy. <laughs> Hopefully he'll calm down a little bit now. I think he did actually go bathroom. But let's get back. Uprooted. So the US versus the UK cover. First of all, uh, Uprooted is a modern original fairy tale. I shouldn't say modern because it's set in like a fairy tale setting. Very heavily influenced by Eastern European folklore and legends. It is about Agnieszka. She is basically given by her town to the dragon who is a wizard who kind of lives in a tower um and there is this enchanted evil forest so <laughs> i think both covers are really lovely i actually like them a lot before i go into what i think of how they relate to the story i much prefer this cover i think it is gorgeous i think the colors really pop i think it doesn't look like anything else on the market so this cover is done by does it say cover designed by crushed.co.uk so um this cover i do think it's lovely um it's just not my favorite this one is designed by david g stevenson and illustrated by scott mccohen and crush creative uk so or um i should say crush creative did this part in here in the step back this cover i think does a slightly better job does a slightly better job of vibing with what the book is actually about. It looks like a wood cutout. Woods, enchanted woods are a major part of it. It has Agnieszka. It has her friend Kasia. It's got the dragon, you know, it's got the actual dragon books, magic, and I think it really evokes fairy tale very nicely, especially with the uh, you and Uprooted. I think it does a really nice job. I think and in that term, it does, it probably does a better job at getting you an idea of what the book is about. However, like I said, the colors of this one really pop. It does still have um, uh, like quite a bit of plot relevance. And I think it still has that like wood cutout vibe to it, which is important. Plus the woods here have like eyes and like creepy things going on as well as the dragon's tower and Agnieszka's village. I just think it looks more pastoral and whimsical than it actually is. This book is quite dark and I think that this cover does a better job of actually getting the dark parts of the story. So yes, I like this cover better. I think this is the better cover for the story though. Then we have If on a Winter's Night a Traveler. So this is the US cover <laughs> and it's shiny. And this is the UK cover. It's part of the Penguin Modern, or I'm sorry, the Penguin Vintage Classic series. Tank. I'm sorry, you're probably gonna be tilted for the rest of the video. Um, part of the part of the Penguin Vintage Classics series. Again, I much prefer the UK cover. I just think it's nicer looking, more aesthetically pleasing. I also, I'm a sucker for the red spines. I'm a sucker for Penguin Classics in general. I think they're just really quality publishing. 
Um, so I think this is also technically published by Penguin, maybe not Mariner Books. So this is the US cover. I, again, kind of similar to Uprooted, think the US cover does a better job with the book, but neither of these books have a lot going on on their covers. So we have to talk about that. And I think that's actually good. I think that's good for the story. This is um, a sort of weird book. It's really good. I think it's perfect if you're looking for, I don't wanna say accessible classic, it's not necessarily accessible, but it's short. It's not, it's not an easy read because it's got like 13 different stories going on and the frame narrative is narrated by you, the narrator, like a you, so that's kind of weird. But I think that these pared down simpler covers do a really good job of, of letting you know the words and the story itself are the impressive part. So this cover is designed by Michael Salou. Salu, Michael Salu. Like I said, really lovely. And this one is designed by Peter Mendelssohn and Oliver Monday. So I think it does a better job of capturing the story because of the reflective book. That is 100% the easiest way to pitch this story. Yes, there are narratives within here that do not have to do with you, but you are the frame narrator. You are the one that's important. And when you pick this book up on the shelf, you see yourself reflected back in the book, which is just perfect. Now this one, I just think it's lovely. I think it doesn't do a great job of giving you an idea at all of what this book is. The tilted letters are nice, but it's not really a tilted story. It's not wonky. It has funny parts and it's weird, but I don't think the tilted letters really give a good rendition of that. I also think that the title, while I adore the title and it is perfect for the story once you read it, doesn't do a lot for the reader, especially since it's taking up the entire cover. It's kind of saying like, this is the part you should look at. And yes, you should be looking at the words of this book, but this one really letting that reflective book stare back at you. I really think this is the perfect cover. I just really prefer this one. Now we have Stranger Dreamer. This is one of my favorite books of all time. That being said, I don't really love either of these covers. So first we have the UK cover. This is the cover illustration is by Jantine Zandbergen and the, oh, this is just off photo. So the, the cover illustrated, the cover illustration is Jantine Zandbergen. Um, very simple, very simple cover. And then we have the American cover. This cover is got a lot going on. So the metal texture, which is the yellow is a shutterstock.com wash, the gold foil, oh, I guess, this is the metal texture then? Okay, this is the metal texture. This is the gold foiling. This is from Elsa Shutterstock, Nina, uh, Nina Nina, uh, I think. The distressed paper texture. I don't know where that comes into play. <laughs> is also Shutterstock, Lexus Tus. The design is Maggie Edkins and Sammy Ewan. And overall, the jacket is copyright 2017 Hachette Book Group. Okay, so a <laughs> lot going on with this cover. I don't, I don't hate either of the covers. I think they're both lovely. I just don't think either of them do a phenomenal job. And I think that they're both just okay. Of the two, this is more eye-catching. I remember when this came out, I was like, that looks weird. I don't think that's exactly the vibe this book should be giving off. But I also don't know how else you would give off any vibe that this book has. Strange the Dreamer is about Laszlo Strange. He's a librarian. He travels to the city of Weep that was considered like a fairy tale city, but is no longer after they've suffered some great tragedy, which is like part of the mystery of the book. And Sarai, who is living in the city of Weep and is sort of an outcast type character. And I don't want to say more than that, but this is a phenomenal book. I fully recommend it. I think of the two, this does a better job as describing what this book is about just with images. I think that the blue is obviously very important. If you've read this book, you know that blue skinned people are very, very important. And I think that the gold does a good job because 
it really shows i mean there's more to the gold but it shows the the magical and the whimsicality especially with them compared to each other i think the shininess also really adds to that this book is a very shiny beautiful book to read so we have the moths here which are super important that is sarai's power she uh, has a thing with moths they fly out of her mouth it's very creepy and I like that they're flying away. They seem to be flying into the book. So you to open the book and it's like you're opening it up to the moths, which I think is just a really neat touch. For the UK cover, again, I like that they're going with the blue and the gold color scheme for the same reasons I've pretty much just said. I do think that this moth, it's really interesting. They have alchemical signatures. I don't know if you can see alchemical symbols inside the wings. I think that the thing that really throws me is how like cyberpunk it is kind of giving me uh cyberpunk vibes it's giving me this book is not cyberpunk or steampunk really in any way so that is probably the part that throws me more i also think the constellations uh, just kind of like in the background they're a nice touch but they don't bring much to the story and they almost give the wrong idea i think about what this book is about i do think it's lovely like i said and i do like the touch of alchemical symbols but Neither, neither of these books really wins it for me. I think they're both on the same level of how well they do describing the book. So then we have a book I just finished and I recorded a whole reading vlog so you can go check that out and that is Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber. So I don't actually have the standard US hardcover. The standard actually looks like this um, but this is the Barnes & Noble edition so it's pinker. Personally I think the pink version much nicer than the standard edition because the main character's hair is pink. Yeah, here we go. Here's the American edition of the book and this cover. The jacket is designed by Erin Fitzsimmons. And then we have the UK cover, which even, even carries around to the back a little bit, which this cover is, again, my favorite of the two this cover the illustration is from lisa perrin the design is by lydia blagden so let's talk about this one like i said the cover is pink typically it's not pink covers this is just the barnes and noble edition i do think that the pink is a smart choice again because the main character's hair is pink and i think it represents a lot about evangeline fox then we have a heart here <laughs> um and the universe kind of i guess so the heart it's obviously called once upon a broken heart and yes hearts and broken hearts and all that is very important in the story uh, the universe maybe not so much although i do think that the heart kind of functions almost like a gate or an arch and arches are very important in this book as well so you're kind of seeing like past the arch like what's beyond it it's a mystery it's magnificent it's terrifying i think that is a really good important description of this book and some of the important elements of it now we have this one which is just like chock full of things going on so we have a knight and we have a knight with no head and i do think there is quite a bit of symbolism there however i don't think it's really an important piece of symbolism we also have uh, some flowers at uh, fox over here and over here and foxes her name is evangeline fox and there is a story called the fox and the archer that plays a role in the book kind of um, and on the back we have a prince or a king and a bride and I think that's it. So a lot of symbolism, very lovely. I think this is just a gorgeous cover. I think this cover outdoes the book. The book is not nearly as good as this cover makes it look. That being said, the symbolism here has to do with some of the side characters and I don't know why they went with that. They were kind of the less important, interesting elements to me. Um, I think it's Apollo on Tiberius. The fox, yeah, is like interesting. I guess I noticed there's a key here. Keys are really important. Um, I like that. I think that on the back, the bride and the prince are actually super symbolic. I think the bride could be either Marisol or Evangeline and the prince could be either Apollo, Tiberius or Jax. So I do like that aspect. But really, overall, it's more lovely and it's not a lot going on. Um, 
that has to do with the book. We do have the apple. We have some blood. I keep noticing and pointing out things, but again, they're just kind of symbols. I think that this one that has all the symbolism and sort of is the gate, is the arch, I think that's a lot more important, a lot more noteworthy about the story. Um, if you don't know, because I realize I didn't describe it, Once Upon a Broken Heart is about Evangeline Fox. She makes a deal with the Prince of Hearts, ends up traveling to the Magnificent North to compete in basically a competition to win the Prince's Heart. And um, yeah, that's really the easiest way to describe it. All right, now we have Empire of the Vampire by Jay Kristoff. Again, loved this book to death. Um, this is the American Standard Edition. This cover is done by, the jacket design is by Young Jin Lee. I'm sorry, Young Jin, Young Jin Lim. The illustration is by Jason Chan and the typography by Meg Morley. And then we have the UK Standard Edition. And yes, it is a standard edition I made, sure. And this is Jacket and Art, direction by Michaela Elcano, illustration by Kirby Rosanes. Rosanes. So, Empire of the Vampire is a new epic fantasy series from Jay Kristoff. It follows a world where the sun has gone away and vampires have taken over. It is super dark. It is super good. You're following Gabriel de Leon. He is the last of like a mon monster hunting society. And he basically is telling the story while being imprisoned by a group of the vampires. He's telling his life's story, how he became a monster hunter and also a quest that he went on much later in life. Love this book to death. You can definitely check out my reviews for it. Which cover do I like more? I actually prefer the American edition. However, I think the UK edition has a lot more lovelier exclusive editions. So take that as you will. But the standard US edition is just so epic. So we'll talk about that in a second. So the UK cover does have a lot going on. They both have a lot going on. We've got a sort of a shield slash crest opening here. And we've got animals surrounding it as well as the angel, a pentagram, um, which is part of the um, the, the society that Gabe is a part of. We've got the red embossing, lots of red embossing. We have the angel with the cup, which is really important, and an angel with a skull. Um, and yeah, we just have a lot of animals, a lot going on. There's a mountain down here, a castle up here. I know you can't really see super well because it's so dark. There is so much. And I think that it evokes the dark aesthetic of this a lot. I compare J. Kristoff's writing a lot to shows like Hannibal and just how bloody they can be and how intense they can be, especially relationships between characters. And I think that this does evoke that quite nicely. I don't know if it evokes vampire though. I think that is kind of what this is missing. I I love the sword. I love the spear. I love how everything is slightly different. I love the animals. Animals are, so each animal actually, I believe, represents a different vampire house, or at least partly does. But there is also a vampire house that talks to animals, and they're not really a super big, important role in this. So I was just kind of like, why, why are we putting so many animals on here? But, you know, horses are really important, especially for Gabe. And we also have, you know, the lion, the leon, and some wolves that's also important, and a snake. You know, there, there's a lot of symbolism with the animals, even as we have them. And I really, the angels here are the highlight for me. I think they do a great job and are super important in adding to the cover. Because this book also has a kind of Dan Brown-esque vibe to it. But the American cover, I think it does a better job. <laughs> I think it does a better job. It's a little simpler, which I think fantasy books sometimes need. So we have Gabe in all his glory. We see some of his tattoos. It's maybe a bit faint, but there you go. Some of Gabe's tattoos. Gabe has his sword. His sword is super important. And again, we have some of the animals. Um, we've got a wolf. We've got a bird. Uh, we've got a snake and we've got a bear. Again, part of vampire houses. Again, animals important. But more importantly than the animals, I think, is the fact that they're made of blood. Now, this evokes Nevernight for me more than it does Empire the Vampire. But it evokes Vampire better than this cover does. This cover looks like an angelic dark fantasy. This looks like a bloody and gory dark fantasy. And that's more akin to what it is. Even though it's simpler, even though it doesn't have nearly as much symbolism. In this cover, I really think this is the winner. All right, and then we have another one of my favorites. We have The Starless Sea by Aaron Morgenstern. This is the US hardcover. And this is the UK hardcover. 
Um, this, let's do illustrators. This is by, designed by Suzanne Dean. The, <laughs> the jacket, there's a lot going on here. So the marbled background is Gemma Lewis. The man illustration is by Daniel Agnius. The B sorting key illustrations by Richard Merritt. The back marble background is the University of Washington Libraries Special Collections. So there's so much going on. That's the back of the jacket. There's a lot, a lot, a lot going on with this cover. Now this is a cover. I think it also has a lot going on, but I don't know if it'll have as many people listed. So we've got the jacket illustration by Dan Flunderbur and the jacket design by John Fontana. So a little bit less going on. Which one do I prefer? This one. I think the Water Sense Edition is even lovelier, but this one is my favorite. As for which one has a better job describing what this book is about. I think they actually both do a pretty fair job. I'm not gonna lie. I think this one's slightly more. So let's talk about this one first. We have the black background, which I think is a bold choice and really pulls into the night circus. I think that the colors on the UK cover do a nicer job pulling you into the whimsy and the beauty of this book. But we have the gold, we have the sort of pearls, which I would say have, they evoke really sea and pirate, which is important. We also have the keys. Keys are super important because doors are super important and each key is slightly different. So, I mean, doors are, keys are very important in the book as well, but I shouldn't like disregard that. Each key is different. It's a different type of key, which I think is really cool. This one looks more like a modern day key. This is much older, you know, that kind of thing. We also have symbolisms in the keys going on. Like here is a B, here is a heart. Did I point to the right B? B, heart. This one's a book. Back here we have one with a feather. Um, and I think that's really lovely. I also think the ribbon does a really good job of evoking waves and evoking sea without being like a sea, a sea. Uh, the yellow also think really important. I, I think it is a lovely cover. I think it just looks kind of washed out. It looks kind of boring, especially because it's really pulling from color schemes and ideas from the night circus, which is okay because that's the book that made her very famous, but I feel like it needs to live in its own place. And I think that the UK cover does a much better job of that. So we obviously have the B. Bs are super important. And on the side, we have a sword. Swords are super important in this book. And on the back, a key. Again, keys really important. Plus we have someone running off the page and they actually look like they're running into the binding where I liked how the moths were flying into the book of the Stranger Dreamer. I like that he's running into the binding, into the spine. Like you have to like peel it open to find him. I really like that. And it could be any of the men really in this book. I like to choose and think it is um, Zachary as or Rawlings, our protagonist, but it really could be anyone. It could be Dorian for all we know. And I mean, it looks like a book. It looks like an old fashioned book. We've got this like goldish ink splatter that could be honey. We've got um, like edges here. Again, it looks like it could be honey. It looks like it could be gold ink. We've got this like super noticeable spine. You know, we've got, I think the marble definitely pulls water sea elements because it looks like waves and it's blue. So yeah, I think this cover really wins. I really think this cover wins. Um, and I didn't describe what this book is about. This book is about Zachary Ezra Rollins. He discovers a book at his school library that basically takes him down a rabbit hole and he ends up on an adventure to find the starless sea. That doesn't even begin to describe what this book is about. This book's amazing. But I actually have a um, another cover to show you for this. This is the US paperback cover. I am so happy they redesigned this cover. I, I don't love it more than the UK hardback, but I do love this cover. This is the cover the book deserved when it came out. We have a pirate ship. We have the sea. We have an arch, a doorway. We have up here a B that kind of looks like a cross. And it just, these old walls, these old walls are just gorgeous. And I think they're very evocative of the world of the Starless Sea. I adore this cover. I love this redesign. I'm so glad they did this redesign. <laughs> And this cover is designed by Madeline Partner and the illustration is from Alex ekman -Lon. And finally, last but not least, a book I love but probably should reread because it's getting foggier in my memory almost every day. We have Sabriel by Garth Nix and I actually have three covers to show you. I have the current UK cover, the 
Australian cover and I have the throwback US cover. These are the three different covers I own. So I just was like, okay, we'll do all three of them. So this is the US cover for the 25th anniversary of Sabriel, which, oh my God, 25 years. It's like the same age I am. That's weird. This cover is done by Leo and Diane Dillon and designed by Darcy Soper. So here we go. We have Sabriel in all her glory. And then we have the current UK cover. Again, Sabriel in all her glory with some shiny gold. This is designed by Alexandra Alden and Sophie McDonald and illustrated by Gavin Reese. And finally, I'm not gonna, not gonna lie, this is my favorite by far cover for Sabriel and one of my favorite covers of all time. I just think it's the perfect fantasy cover. The Australian edition, look at how beautiful that is. This is designed by Sandra Nobes and the artwork is done by Sebastian Ciafaglioni. Ciafaglioni, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, I love, I love this. This is exactly how I picture Sabriel. And so, I mean, obviously all three covers kind of have similarities in that she is on the cover. She has got a sword in this one, but it's not like a big bulky sword. It's a rapier and she's got her bells. That's my favorite touch, the bells across her. I love the blue. I love the dark colors. I love the purple hues, very necromantic. And this is a story about a necromancer. So it's perfect. As for the UK cover, um, it's got a lot going on. She does have a bell. She does have a sword. I think it's a little bulkier of a sword and you can kind of see like magic around her and like the symbol. I think that her outfit here is a lot more battle ready and her skirts have keys on them. You definitely can't see that, but there are keys designed on them. I also love her boots. I think that these covers, this one and the Australian one really provide a lot of cosplay potential. Not gonna lie. She does have a bell. I don't know if I mentioned that. She has a bell and the bell itself has its own symbols on them. I think that the designs for how the character looks are both very similar. They're both very much how Sabriel is described in the books. I think this one's definitely taken knots from this cover though. My big difference is the art style. I love this. It's realistic. It's very fantasy. It's very Dungeons and Dragons feeling. This one is done in like black and white ink and it is gorgeous. Do not get me wrong. I love this cover. This is a cover that this book deserves. Um, this cover is just, I like the art style better. Um, as for symbolism, I think they really are on the same page though. And then we have the US cover. Again, I think that all three covers have a lot similar. We have Sabriel, she's looking similar. This one has a monster in the background, which I think is probably a little better for the book in what it's about, just because there are monsters in this book. She's got her bells, she's holding a bell, she's got her sword, the sword has a bunch of symbols on it. Um, but yeah, otherwise she looks mostly the same, except uh, slightly different. Um, I do love the touch, I didn't notice it till just now, of the waves coming off of the sort of skirt there. Uh, so of, of the books, which one describes the story the best by the cover. This one, I think just because the addition of the monster really pulls it together, really makes it a little more accurate to what it's actually about. And there we go. That was a lot of talking about covers. Those are some UK versus US covers and my thoughts on them and which ones do a better job of actually describing what the books are about without telling you what the books are about. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you have any covers that you think are interesting next to each other or one where you're like, yeah, the publisher really hit it out of the park for this cover, but like failed with the, this alternative edition. Let's talk. Let's talk in the comments. Have you read any of these books? Let's talk about that in the comments as well. Thank you for being here. If you're a subscriber, thank you super, super much. I love every single one of you. I appreciate every single one of you. And if you want to see more content like this, please subscribe. I try to post every week. I am going to leave you now. I'm going to spend some time with my dog before I have to head to work. And if you are somewhere cold, I hope you're staying warm. If you're somewhere warm, I hope you're staying comfortable. And most of all, I hope you are reading a great book. I will see you guys next time. Bye.